Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I'm still working on my owl mask. Uh, this is a display mask of a great horned owl. Uh, it's going to go on the wall like these guys, so the eyes won't be cut out. They'll be painted. It should look really cool when they're done. This is the third video in this series, and in the previous videos, I showed you how I made this uh, mold. Uh, basically, it's a positive mold made out of Sargent's Plastilina. It's a really soft oil-based clay, and today we're going to be adding the paper paper mache. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's kind of shiny because I used some Vaseline over the entire mask. Now the Vaseline will help you uh, smooth it off. You can use a tool like this, your fingers. Um, it's a little bit difficult to get the Sargent's Plastilina smooth. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but it, if it's got really big bumps, that's going to show on the finished piece. So you want to smooth that out as much as you can. The other thing the Vaseline is for is to make the paper mache easier to get off. You do have an oil-based clay, but it still helps to add the Vaseline to the top. I'm going to be using the blue shop towels. The first thing you have to do when you get these shop towels, they're made by the Scott Company. I know they're not available everywhere, um, but you can get blue shop towels in most hardware stores and um, mechanics stores in the United States. And the first thing you have to do is rip off the outside edges, all four of them. And I'm also going to use a paste made out of joint compound and glue, white glue. I get them in big, big buckets because I use it a lot. If you're looking for an exact recipe, I don't have one. You throw some joint compound in there and then you pour some glue on top of it and you stir it around until you get the, uh, the thickness that you want. Now with most paper mache, when you're using uh, the, the torn strips of newspaper and a flour and water paste, it's the paper that gives you the solidness. Uh, you have to use quite a few layers to get it really stiff and hard, but the paste really is just there to hold them together. With these shop towels, I only use two or three layers, and so it's actually the paste that's making it hard. So I use as much paste as I can. And yes, I'm, I'm dipping my paper in the paste. I know that Dan Reeder says he'll come and get you if he catches you dipping your paper in the paste. I'm doing that because I actually want a lot of paste. There's some parts that I really want to emphasize when I'm painting, and the eyelid is one of them. So I'm using my tool to make sure that the paper gets down into that dip right there, and that it defines the eye really well. The styrofoam balls will probably stick to the paper mache as well, but that's okay. It'll be on the inside of the mask, and it doesn't matter. If you have any air bubbles, go ahead and push them out. And what I just did of making that um, edge right across the eye, try not to do that. <laughs> That's not a good idea. Oh well. That's just because you want a nice, nice smooth surface on that eye. It doesn't really matter as much anywhere else, especially since I'm going to be doing a lot of texturing with some tissue paper when we get all done. I'm going to be using some techniques that I used on the raccoon, uh, both for coloring and texturing this fellow. But the eyes get no texture, hopefully. So I just covered it up, and we're good to go. Something like this where it goes in really deep, you're going to get some really strong wrinkles. Let's go ahead and tear the paper. The first time I put a, a piece of paper mache over these kind of rounded edges that need to be sharp. I'm just covering the the clay exactly as it sits there. But then, like up here, this is the second layer. I'm kind of pushing them together to try to sharpen that edge. That way we can have a um, like the edges of feathers without 
making a really, really thin edge of clay that we wouldn't be able to get out. So I'm doing that, hopefully you can see me here, on the ears, because those are just feathers. All along this rough here, I'll do it um, down here. I haven't got the second one on there yet, but I'll do that on this part. All around here, the bottom of this beak, I didn't fill it in because I was afraid that it was so long I wouldn't be able to get that oil-based clay out of there, so I left this open. And now I'm going to use this nice soft brush, and I'm just going to coat him with the paste. I might actually have to make some more. hope not, but maybe I will. want him completely saturated with the paste. And I don't want the paste to be filling in those creases around his eyes, so it's a little tricky. I set the mask in front of a fan and left it overnight. It's still nowhere close to dry enough. It's been raining really hard for weeks, it seems like here. I think that's an exaggeration, but that's what it feels like. So it's it's really humid, and this is not dry. You don't want to take it off this form, uh, off of the clay itself, until the paper mache is absolutely hard. Otherwise, it's going to change the shape, and you're going to you're going to lose it. So this owl mask isn't done yet, but it's getting a lot closer. Um, I'm going to leave this, like I said, for maybe three or four more days to make sure it's really nice and hard. And then I'll take it off the clay and we'll be coloring and texturing it both with some tissue paper. I'm going to be using an acrylic medium for the paste rather than the, this paste because I want that color to show up really nice. And um, I, I've used the tissue paper coloring and texturing technique before on the bongo antelope and the raccoon. So if you want to check my YouTube channel or my blog for those tutorials, uh, you can kind of see in advance what that's going to look like. If you want to, you can go ahead and paint your, um, your owl mask. That will work just fine too. I just happen to really enjoy using the paper and I ordered a whole bunch of it. I've got a box of it over there. I want to use it up. So that's what I'm going to be doing in the next video. Be sure to watch for it and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com.